Are you ready? Ocho. Oh my god, we did not have to go four times. I know, uh, I just wanted you to say Ocho. Hell yeah. Because I know you would have uh, been sad if you didn't. I'd resign myself to that fact. Uh, <laughs> howdy, gamers. Hello. Welcome to another episode of the Weeb Club. Um, as you will, I'm sure, notice, uh, our friend and Manji is not with us today. Yep, um, he's out. I don't know why, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, we didn't really that's ask. Fine. Uh, to be honest, he just asked if we could record tomorrow, but uh, I'm not like Street Fighter comes out tonight. I'm not. I'm not recording tomorrow. Like I've had plans to play with like friends for like mm-hmm. basically a year now. So fuck that. So I was like, well, we can just take a break. And then Crash was like, yeah. you know what? We're recording the normal well, day. We just no did matter a Nanmanji Crafts episode, so it's like, why not do a Vindy Crafts episode, right? As opposed so, to another, um, yeah. Well, I mean, let's episode. let's be honest. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, uh, also, if, if by chance I wasn't able to record, I mean, I guess you guys did. You you do like one or two, but clearly, uh, any more than that is an ask. So, um, but uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just shitting on you for last year. Yeah, I don't know no why idea. I did that. I'm cringe. I'm cringe. Anyway, comments. Uh, I did read them, but now I need to go through them again. Yeah, uh, I'm looking back. Uh, hold on. There was one, or there were. Hold on. Well, there was two that creeped me out a little bit because they're written very differently. But uh, one is by someone who literally doesn't have a name or avatar. Uh, no, actually, did no. What the fuck? He left another comment. This is scary. Uh, so are they just? Did he leave it? Did Ombre leave two comments and one of them got weird glitched out? I don't know. Do you see it? Because they liter- they're literally the same comment. They're just worded differently. Where they talk about Ganondorf, Ganon and Ganondorf, and then they talk about. Uh, oh yeah, I of- saw that. That was yeah, that was funny. And then literally after that, like I was like, "Oh no, Ombre's comment has the the Gundam compilation movies." And then no, I saw another comment by the these two are the same people. They're the same person. They are clones of each other. Like they're just. It's, I just thought it was fucking weird, dude. Yeah, like, it's also possible that multiple people just genuinely wanted to be the uh, the um actually guy for the you know exact I mean? same things in the exact same order. Uh, so all right. Yeah, it is what it is. Or yeah, or it's like just trying to maximize your chances of I don't know. Um hold on uh there was one you responded to um or you know you're gonna bring up a different one yeah i was gonna say uh grim brings up that i'm like describing video speed as if it's like video game frame rates and can be easily processed uh and it says like rip adhd viewers well i i have adhd that's why i have to listen in two times speed i feel like that was like what i was trying to say is like otherwise i get too fucking like it gets too slow for me and i start getting distracted and paying attention to other things you know what i mean i fucking need the uh I need like the two times to to keep me like interested. Mm-hmm. I thought you were saying you use it as background noise, but or like like you're doing something else anyway. Yeah, well, either way, like I would get distracted if it was in okay. one time speed. It's why I like can't do audiobooks. I mean, I guess I could try audiobooks in two times speed, but like I try not to do like anything that like um could like emotionally resonate with me in two times speed because mm-hmm. I feel like that's mm-hmm. a little lame. You know what I mean? I kind of do it for shit that's just like content background noise bullshit. As opposed to, um, like, uh, you know, like an audiobook where I would, like, want to listen at one time speed just because, like, you know, it, it just, mm-hmm. like, it feels like that's the better way to, to do it. But also, like, that shit's too slow for me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just can't pay attention, so I have to keep, like, going back and missing shit. Whereas, you know what I mean? It's just, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I mean, it made me think because I have some friends who are going through One Piece, uh, with, with times two speed at the on the dub with uh, guides to skip filler and i think they're using something that also skips they're they're just you know the intros and openings and stuff because they're just kind of long and i'm like cowards um so i don't know if they've ha- had emotional like resonance because you know uh because i, I don't know I, it, it's a thing it's whatever i understand valuing your time but it's not for me at least for not for like yeah you said like anything i care about like uh you know youtube videos one thing but uh yeah, not anime. 
for sure. Yeah, um, like I would never watch a show in two times speed or um, like a movie or like listen to music in two times. Well, obviously, because it gets pitch adjusted, right? And it's not the same, but uh, yeah, it just it, it's like specifically YouTube videos because it's just like a lot of times it's like like I'm watching it for information more than anything else. So if I can get the information yeah. quicker, why would I? You know what I mean? That makes sense. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, um, I mean, there are videos that go for a more emotional like thing, but even then, that's not necessarily. Yeah. That's probably you know that's like that's different. And, and, and sometimes with those, watching, I'll, I'll so. slow it down. But a lot of time, yeah. And like, I mean, if I'm watching something that's also like trying to be like funny, like it's like a a, a comedy video or like you know what I mean, I'll, I'll watch it normal speed because you know comedy kind of gets neutered if, if you've, uh, when you yeah, double if you've, for sure yeah, when you double that bit. the timing right. Um, but yeah, I I wish uh, none was here for Titania's comment about uh, um, Gaki Gaki Daisho because she just points out uh, um, she didn't know how to feel when Monkichi of uh, was beating up the homeless, but she knew he was real when he beat up the, when he blew up the police. And I I just something is funny about the phrase "blew up the police," and I, I, I don't know. <laughs> just yeah. made me laugh. Um. Okay, so I don't want to yell at y'all. I I don't have any more comments actually. Do you? Uh, no, we can move on to the Reddit. Okay. Uh, I didn't like when people brought up this point on the episode, uh, like brought things up like this, so I didn't bring it up. But uh, Master Spoon puts a thing that's like a, a, a funny meme about 99, but then he says like they didn't even talk about Hunter x Hunter in the episode. That's because <laughs> it is not a remake. They're not like remake. Like they are re-adapting the yeah. manga. It is a re-adaptation. It is not a remake, right? Hunter x Hunter 2011 is not trying to redo Hunter x Hunter 1999. Hunter Hunter 2011 is trying to readapt the manga Hunter Hunter. So like saying it's a fucking remake is just wrong. Like you're just not looking at like the fucking facts of the situation. And like you know that it's not trying to remake Hunter Hunter 99 because it doesn't have like the extra shit that Hunter Hunter 99 added in, no. right? It just yeah. does the fucking manga. The only thing I can think of that's that's even close is because there's the part in the Trick Tower where they go off into the extra room for like three days or something because they lost the round and like um in 99 like in the manga it's just a single uh text panel that like there's no visuals and 99 it's a brief little montage and in 2011 it's a full ass half an episode which is unusual because 2011 has very little anime original content all things especially compared to 99 so even yeah. like comparing the anime original content to, from to, to 2011 to 99 they're still very different in how they're doing it so it's definitely not a remake right where, where um and, and i actually come to, i can't even think of an example where you do have like an anime being adapted twice and you do have like i mean sometimes you'll get stuff like uh mahoji and guru guru where the old uh shaved scarabou kun did a video on it where he talked about how like there was some anime original content in the old one that was adapted into the manga like later on in the run of the manga they, they brought in stuff that was from earlier parts of the anime basically and then um hitamari sketch has uh Sai sister Chika, who is an anime original character, but shows up in content that was adapted in like season three or four, even though she so showed up in season one and two in the in the anime. Um, hmm. So, so you have instances like that, but that's still very different. Like if you had that, but also like yeah, it was from anime to anime instead of uh, uh, of two different uh, series, you know. But but yeah, that's right. clearly not the case. So um, yeah, that's why like I even stress like people even in the comments brought up like the Gundam movies. But I even tried to stress when I said those that I don't know if I necessarily consider those adaptation like remakes, right? Like I think I stressed that like if anything, it's probably like a re-edit or like a recut. You know what I mean? Yeah, we were pretty clear about like our stance where it's like it's not really a remake unless like the only weird exception we weren't sure on was is it a remake if it's like um well because like I, I brought up Shin Ultraman and I, I could say it now Shin Kamen Rider where it's like they're they're taking the same story beats of an entire TV series and cramming it into one movie but it's like it's still a different medium technically but like then it's just, it just seems kind of weird to say that Shin Godzilla is a remake of Godzilla but Shin Ultraman and Shin Kamen Rider are not remakes of their thing even though it's like a trilogy so I don't know and but they are all really different anyway so I I, I don't know it's weird um so uh but yeah, like I, I agree, we were pretty clear with our definition. But oh well, yeah, it is so what it is. It is, yeah. I mean, people just aren't gonna listen or are gonna decide. Well, and like I mean, you know, and I would be more forgiving if it was like normies or people that are very like outside of. But if you are listening to a fucking anime podcast that has like a thousand subscribers, like like if you are listening to the fucking Weeb Club, you're not some like fucking person who doesn't know. You know what I mean? Like, and I guess it is. 
partially someone's fault for putting it in the fucking thumbnail. I guess <laughs> now that I look at the thumbnail, I didn't look at it before. But be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And like, you know what? Okay, y'all did get fucking clickbaited. That did happen. But uh, that's not on us. And it still shows people didn't actually listen to the content of the episode. Well, Why would that, we talk about gonna, Hunter Hunter? Like, it's not a Master Spoon literally admitted that he didn't actually because he he didn't listen to the full discussion before he brought up Hunter Hunter. So like he saw the ah, thumbnail, posted funny funny Reddit, and then listened yeah, discussion yeah. where we would have mentioned that we don't wouldn't have even considered um 2011 a remake of 99, and uh, you know so that's still true even though I like yeah yeah I, we're good. Um, but yeah. Uh, okay. Do you want to talk about the uh, go to the topic? The tip topic, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, you so, it, but you can elaborate because it was literally just a short phrase. So yeah, yeah and I, I think it's it's funny. It just happened, but we're we are recording this like a couple hours earlier than we normally do, and the topic is about being old and jaded. So you know <laughs> that just kind of works out. But like, I know that you felt this because uh, like I've talked to you about this, but like I just kind of want to talk about like the experience of like being into something for long enough that you really stop caring about like what everyone in like that oh, oh like, for sure yeah you like move on and you just like take the pieces that you like from it but you don't actually stay like entrenched in that mm-hmm. um and then you get like really jaded with like that community or that what like whatever it is uh, yeah uh, i know exactly like, what you mean yeah um because like I, I here's a good example that's not even just specific because I, I i'm still like like i literally i'm literally on two anime slash manga podcasts right so even if i right. don't really engage with a lot of like fans or fan bases i still it's still like i can't say i've moved on from anime and taken the good things right um but right. a particularly formative part of i think you know both of our uh you know um lineages in this kind of space was you know the pcp right um you know yeah. uh digi jess best guy ever especially best guy ever in your and both of our cases actually i, I met the guy uh, right yeah. where it's like we i was really into i 2016 i was the biggest fucking pcp gobbler i want like di, my the example i give is like did she did a series uh, she did uh b did a series where she um like went through her mal and explained every show that she dropped and why Dude, she dropped i also it. watched that video now I've, i watch it in two times speed but i also I, watched oh, that video. God. i did not and i still finished the last episode on the day that it was uploaded uh, so like I was a fucking, I, and I, I caught up with like most, uh, you know, they all did content. Like I, I still think, you know, I have memories of like Ben Saints, uh, Pokemon Nuzlocke being like really like, I, I think I described the sun and moon double Nuzlocke, like soul link Nuzlocke or Nuzlocke he did with, uh, Mon- Monkey Jones where they kind of competed and then Monkey died and he was like already spinning a narrative about his dead ghost Pokemon sort of like haunting him. And then it sort of resolved in a climax where he fought monkey jones and monkey jones made a team of all of his like dead pokemon like from hell like it was wild like uh you know so like he did some fun stuff you know like there's they just did a whole bunch of interesting stuff and just like casual stuff and i got i I remember the specific point that i broke and kind of went i have to get away from this was because uh b was doing a series with um her then girlfriend like they were ranking the Pokemon designs and I was, and at this around the same time I read the bog leech Pokemon design reviews and they are night and day in like how they approach the topic. Because after a certain point B and may, I think her name was, were just like going, they were, they were just rating the Pokemon, like not specifically the design. They weren't thinking about like what works about the design, what the purpose of it is. Like I remember they saw Bruxish, Brux, Bruxish and I, they were like, no. And it's like, why? It, yeah. It's an ugly Pokemon, but like what it's, at the point like an example i gave to my friend is like would it be cooler if they made it red and black and gave it spikes like no the, the design has a purpose to it right <laughs> i like that like, that goes hard exactly like 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 what's a better version of the design like it's not because you you know even if you don't fundamentally like what it is it's still accomplishing a purpose like that's the whole like there's ugly pokemon there's cute pokemon there's awesome pokemon there's silly pokemon right like they all accomplish some kind of purpose and if you're not gonna at least try to acknowledge that purpose you know um and and like because i couldn't tell you what pokemon b likes aside from that she likes them where with bog leech uh they had a very like very in-depth like they brought up zoology and mythological like a uh, folklore context like that's where i learned the, the tidbit about common writer and how um like well, uh, someone did point out that it's actually a uh myth more of a mythological reference that bog leech wasn't aware of and i'm still not actually i, I haven't actually seen that sourced 
but I, the connection I made in my Toka video about how, um, you know, bug types in Pokemon, they beat dark type as basically a reference to Common Rider was how I read it at mm-hmm. the time. You know, like that, like they were really informative po- and just reviews on the designs. I could tell their tastes to the point that when some Ultra Beasts came out later in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, I could actually reasonably guess which ones they would like and which new Pokemon they didn't like. And I was basically right, you know, where so it's like I just sort of no- so not only was I noticing that just, you know, the faults with sort of B and how uh, her con- like just her tastes were where they're very like fickle and you know random you know like uh personal i guess it to a way that i can't really get at anything out of that where um and also just how parasocial i was getting and uh just like and i realized like yeah i need i need to get away from this and uh i just eventually you know i fell in with the the bsa and you know that's evolved into this right so it's so again like yeah. i took those good things and got a lot of good things out of that time period but i've also very much moved on and kind of just do not give a shit whatsoever, right? So yeah, well, um, I think you brought up a like a good point, which is like, um, <clears throat> okay, so like it's not that like when I say I'm old and jaded, it doesn't mean that I you know like I'm watching Oshinoko and I'm enjoying it. You know what I mean? When I watch mm-hmm. like my my problem with watching anime nowadays is much more of like a uh, like an ADHD thing and like not wanting to watch it and not being able to watch dubbed, but not wanting to watch subbed, but not wanting to sit down and just watch a bunch of anime. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh, like I'm, I'm too antsy for that uh, right now. And like, it's almost more of a, a logistical thing than it is. It, with, right. Like, just exactly. Being, you know, like, cause we've talked about how like uh, the, the pause and select, like, you know, cinema versus TV distinction where TV, you can just kind of throw on in the background and it, it's not expecting you to be paying full attention. But if you're watching something with subtitles, it becomes cinema because you have to pay attention all the time right? Exactly. to understand what's going on, even though it was made, like, especially like, like Super Sentai, it would be a great sh- Aikatsu. These are great shows to just throw on the background because, you know, they're not um, fil- they're not film. They're not something that needs to be engaged with all the time, except for the fact that I can't understand what the fucking silly girls are saying um so you know uh it, yeah but anyway you keep going um um sorry so or you're talking about uh, how you you're, you're not like out of anime but you right, just right. kind of don't it's, watch it's much a more of, of a community thing right i'm much more jaded with like i don't care what people are saying on and like for a long time it was just so like i did i i did want to engage with people talking about it and i didn't want to talk about it um but i would engage in like different places right so it's like you know um the you know what i mean it's like engaging on different social media sites and it's like i don't want to fucking go to like reddit or twitter or 4chan or anything to like look at people talk about uh like anime or shit because like Mm -hmm. i'm at the point now where i just think most people are fucking like dumb and wrong you know what i mean yeah no like i even even like if if i was going to look out an opinion or something it would probably be like a hopes of a decent video essay but even then it's like i'm decently like like i think what it is is i'm convinced enough of and you know secure enough in what i like that i don't need to go looking for outside validation you know which and i say that even because like one thing i've i've really felt uh with my discord server that i left is i I even talked about it with some of the members were just like they were part of the reason they were seeking me and connected with my content and even wanted me to check out things that they liked was because i was able to put into words what they liked about the thing that they couldn't put do themselves right like that's why people clicked with some of my content and because i i've I, you know saw, seen comments of people like my hitamari sketch video i remember someone quote tweeted it and said like this is why i like hitamari sketch or that like this puts in the words and it's like you know and i just remember people like recommended me things with that hope of me engaging you being able to do it because you did it for for one or two or three things they like so you should be able to do it for all of them right and it's the exactly. same reason that like you know, people will get so upset. And, you know, like, we like to joke at you, but, like, people will get so upset with you over, like, not liking MHA as much or other things. And it's because, like, ultimately, <laughs> it is these, like, small differences, right? It's that, like, you agree on 99% of things, but that 1% really pisses them off. You know what I mean? It's like, guys, come on. Like, yeah. it's, well, it's the uh, one you, thing that I just, it doesn't grab me. What do you want from me? Wh- yeah, and then even, well, because like, you reminded me of two things. One with One Piece, where it's just, like, I remember... um Curious Cat hap- uh, basically um I mentioned that I liked um the bad end musical chapter and someone commented on that like oh how do you still like that chapter even though like the straw hat skin didn't actually get defeated at the end and I'm just like well apparently we like that chapter for two completely different reasons because I just thought it was a good fucking chapter with the way the music wor- worked into the, like the the finale like the presentation of the chapter is just good like I can go read it and be super into it because it's just a solid fucking chapter right where it's like apparently a 
part of the rest of the community only gave a shit about the chapter because of what happened in it or what appeared to happen at the end with the strats seemingly getting blown the fuck up right uh which lasted for a fucking week or two you know so even i think it went on break but then the very next chapter was like yeah no they're fine yeah so it felt so so it was two weeks but it was the very next chapter which is one of those things that like Again, like of a lot of other things, something that I think for some reason anime fans, like especially for One Piece, seem to be like a lot better at. And I think it's because it gets split up so much more that they have to have understood this by now. But like, right. you know, it is not like One Piece is over after every chapter and every week it has a new ending. You know what I mean? People like to act like every time a new chapter comes out, that is the new end of this series. And we look at it up to here in totality. And what it hasn't done yet, it will never do because I cannot conceive a world in which, well, that could possibly happen. You know what I mean? <laughs> so this is the, the end of that, fucking One yeah. Piece. This is the, or, or this is the end of the arc. So this is the end of these characters and these ideas. Even though like One Piece has shown even like, and I'm not even current, but from my understanding recently, that characters that you haven't seen since like, you know, early grand line that you thought were over are coming back. You know what I mean? Like, yep. Yep. Um, um, I, I, yeah, I think you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And yeah, so it's like, um, it's like when people act like, oh, and you know, I am directly calling people out here, but when they're like, oh, Yamato's character wasn't done after Wano. <laughs> Vivi's, you could argue no Vivi's shit. wasn't like fully done after Alabasta. Like, no, um, yeah, but we saw I, her. Like, well, well, what are we fucking talking? Luffy's character, Usopp's character wasn't done after Syrup Village. Like, no shit. No, I brought that up um, in, I think Dot and someone else were arguing about what Wano came up. And I one of the things I mentioned in my comment is that Alabasta is not over. Vivi, Robin, and Crocodile, three of the most important Alabasta relevant characters, are all still around and all can reasonably interact with each other again. Because Crocodile's literally on fucking Cross Guild, uh, Robin's with Luffy, Vivi is God knows fucking where, well, kind of know, but where the fuck, yeah. the, where is she going to go? We have no idea, but she could reasonably interact with, she could be Crocodile again, she could be Robin again, that adds to Alabasta, that adds to these characters, that, like, Alabasta is fucking huge, like, holy shit, but that's, ah, <laughs> um, like, uh, it's insane, but, um, yeah, the story's not over, exactly, um, but the other thing I was gonna mention was, I, I talked to you about this, I don't know if this has come up on the podcast since it came back yet, but Mr. Tokyo fucking Revengers guy, who, um, on Mal, he messaged me about it, and I, I think I gave some brief thoughts, and then I finished it, and I gave it a seven, and he's just like, Tokyo Revengers deserves more than a seven, and I just don't even um. respond. <laughs> like I never, I almost thought it was an eight. Like what? Like it? That's at its peak for me. But now that I've only read it once. Like if I reread it, I'd might probably feel differently. See? But like even then, it's probably not going to get I, higher than an eight at best. Um, I feel like you know? I would have to give. Like I would literally have to give if I gave scores Tokyo Revengers like an eight maybe, and that's like literally just because like I think it is like a high nine. Up until the last, like, two chapters. Like, it is so <laughs> unbelievably banger the whole time. Every arc hits. Every emotional moment hits. Every character hits. I'm into it. I'm eating. I'm loving it. And then those last two chapters hit. It's like, whoa. Like, th- this is the, like, it's it's just one of those endings that just does not hit the mark. You know what I mean? There's, like, it, a, yeah, I you know, it like, happens. Yeah. Um, I think especially it can happen, you know, when you are telling a story for, you know, a very long time. It can happen. But, you know. Uh, there's some pretty famous, and you know, it's not as many as people like to pretend, but there are some pretty famous examples of, mm-hmm. um, you know, different, uh, like, whatever, like, different um, series with bad endings. You know what I mean? There's, like, Shokugeki and fucking uh, We Can't Study. It, it just is what it is, but, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. That's funny. Yeah, well, that, that, there's more than that, because when I did my um, Twitter uh, end of the year, like, here's my favorite anime here's my favorite manga i did like five manga because i had like my favorite manga that i finished my second favorite and then i mentioned uh ipo interviews with monster girls and yatsuba because i'd read all of them and they, i gave them like nine out of ten um and caught I, I like i caught up to them so i didn't never finish them uh, i also mentioned fucking chaya Furu because like it technically it was my favorite manga that i finished that year but i didn't read the whole thing so i didn't want to count it and they're like where's tokyo revengers and i'm like why the fuck would i put a 7 out of 10 on my favorite manga of the year dude like no i just didn't like the manga that much i'm fucking sorry no i'm not sorry you should be sorry like just and that just really cemented just like you know, and that's made possibly part of why I pulled away from my fan base in a lot of ways because, like, they just want the validation, and where they differ from me, 
they don't give a shit right like they don't really like and that's what it felt like i felt like in a lot of cases where like i feel like they don't really care what i say or think and it to the point to the point that it validates them and especially on my old server the way at a lot of elitist attitudes i saw like they clearly don't actually care about my thoughts about elitism or these attitudes be- they just care what i think about the things they like and how they can use those and uh that was what noticing that was definitely a very big reason i pulled away from my discord server and have pulled away just from people and you know fans in general right so yeah. um, um but that is a little outside of the topic but i don't know um i guess yeah that's yeah i, I guess that is moving on getting jaded at something though for sure um, yeah so. and it just i don't know i feel like it's something that like it happens but it's it's interesting because um i don't know i just wanted to like talk about it. i don't know if you have any more thoughts i guess it's not really a good topic uh it just <laughs> like in terms of like having a long discussion it just uh it's something that like i noticed has been happening to me with a lot more stuff recently where it's just like i just get so like i used to get upset seeing people talk and now it's just like i don't know i'm so like doomer about it it's just like it's <laughs> mentally boomed it'll always be mentally boomed um it'll be mentally boomed forever like what can we do yeah. you know what i mean i mean it, yeah, it's pretty normal to like move through communities i think because like i was talking about webcomics a few weeks ago and i just kind of realized like yeah there's been a few areas where i've just been like really into something and then just moved on and not like gone back to it or even thought about it in a long time you know like i i was reading webcomic i read homestuck like it ran for like what fucking seven years or something like that um and i was reading it basically pr- practically from beginning to end uh as it came out and i've never gone back and uh re gone through it again but it was it was a very big part of my life you know for a long time and that's true of a lot of you know and i think we all have things that we just were super into and then we aren't anymore you know um like honestly anime is probably one of the things i've been into the most because i got into it technically manga yeah, agreed. more but uh i feel like anime i got into harder where with manga i was just kind of reading like, I, I read series that my friends liked, and I definitely read series on my own, but I, I never really felt, felt like I got, like, in 2012, when I got into anime, I just had, it was this definitely ex- big experience of just like, holy shit, there's so much here that I can just, I di- and I did, I dived right in and just watched a whole bunch of interesting looking shit, random shit that I just, you know, still remember fondly, even though I, if I, if it came out today, I literally wouldn't even, I'd like read the, look at it on Mal and just skip it, right? Like, I would not fucking watch Upot today. Like, okay, girls are guns. I've seen that at Kantai Collection. Like, girls are battleships. Like, yawn. I don't, like, I've seen it before. I don't need Upot anymore. But, like, it exists. And it, it, it I watched it, and it was a show. And I still remember it because it was a show that I watched at that specific period, you know? And that's true of a lot of just shit I watched then. So, uh, you know, and, and I have a nostalgia for that, you know? And it's, but, um, you know, now seasonals come out and it's like yeah but i guess um as far as like other opinions it obviously like you know again i mentioned before like uh i'm secure in how i feel about things like i don't need the outside validation i don't need to like um i don't need to throw my thoughts out there and hope that i get a like that someone else connects to my thoughts because i can just feel the way i do and i don't you know need to hear from someone else to validate that right um but I, I, I don't know. Or shit, where was I going to go with that? Um, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I guess here's something that it hasn't happened, and I don't think it will, but it might. Um, so, but I guess just because just, I feel like it would be giving, giving me an inter- interesting perspective if it ever happened, but it, it's kind of such a specific thing that it probably won't happen. But anyway, so um, I have a friend who I play video games every week. His brother, I um, I guess we've, we're like friendly acquaintances. Like he's cool. Um, I just really don't know, talk to him that much or know him super well, but uh, he likes me. Um, and uh, so I fucking wake up one morning and I, I don't go to work and he fucking messages, messages me. He's one of the ones going through One Piece, by the way. And he's like, I know what the One Piece is. And he's like after Fishman Island. So I'm like obviously part of me is like well you don't <laughs> but then mm. i but i still wanted to hear what he had to think and we talked about it for a bit uh, and like there was one thing he forgot and then like you know there's some ways i think he's going in the right direction there's other ways i you know obviously i know more about him he's wrong but then he wants to start an anime debate podcast with me uh at, <laughs> so like because i think we were talking about like uh ultra how ultra instinct versus like observation hockey would work and i'm like well hold on uh you know that doesn't sound super interesting to me but like also just the fact that he hasn't seen a whole lot of anime i had the thought of like well what if like i like take you through anime as you being a relative like beginner and me knowing more of my shit and we just like watch shows and like you know comment on so like yeah. I, one idea i thought would be interesting is him 
watching more older mecha before he watched like even Evangelion or Gurren Lagann, right? With like that, he'd have a completely different perspective than a lot of people who just get into anime, you know? And so that was just the thought I had as like, not so much, you know, like I would want to hear out his opinions as someone newer, right? Where if I saw a random unsolicited opinion from someone newer, from someone I don't know, I'd be like, fuck off. I don't care what you think, you know? Um, and, uh, I don't know, it just, uh, that happened to me, I guess it's, like, it's, it's relevant in that it's, like, the opposite of old and jaded, I guess, because, like, I just happen to know someone who would be getting into the, you know, getting into something newer, so, I don't mm. know, I don't think it's gonna happen, but it would be interesting if it did. Yeah, that would be cool, that's super easy to, like, brand, too, because it's, like, the fucking, you know what I mean? It's mm. basically, like, the karate kid, or, you know what I mean, like, any, like, master student story, that goes crazy, or you could treat it like a science experiment, so he's, like, your little fucking... You know what I mean? <laughs> like how does you know what i mean like at the end of the day that's what it is it's like how could i affect the way this man sees evangelion if i fucking you know make him watch all, like f- five years of ultraman first or something yeah, yeah, yeah so, exactly like, <laughs> like if i show him um, all of hideki ano's influences before he sees it for the first time will he think Ano's a genius or a hack you know what i mean <laughs> uh, right exactly that, like that's just interesting but uh, but you know he's the only person i know who's like interested and also i haven't talked to him in like a week because he he just he just hasn't responded back to me so oh well Uh, i don't know if it happens i'll probably mention it here but uh, it's just uh sounds fun to me but who knows yeah Uh, um um, i don't know i guess i don't have anything more about being old and jaded uh (laughs) uh i guess well well, we can mention it uh i assume what inspired the topic was the images done posted that i'm now showing on screen of us being very old uh, no i didn't see or... those oh. i just in my head it was like oh it's an episode of crafts and i it's the two oldest men and i was like well i've, I've felt pretty old and jaded recently so that's so, why i said okay. it you don't okay like but if you go back to the weep club thing you see i see none posting the images and then four minutes later you're like i have the topic and it's like i just oh, saw you're right. maybe it was that you're right maybe it was him posting those you're right <laughs> you're right. Okay. right it's hard for me not to see those as intrinsically related uh, yeah you're right so um <laughs> all right uh but i'm ready to move on to uh well i mean did you have anything to say about ocean Oco episode seven or did you even watch it um no i didn't i i assumed we would just watch it i would just watch it for the next time we have ocean Oco to talk about yeah. um I, I already talked about it last week so yeah uh all right then in that case i guess backlog which yeah uh this is about to be a short fucking episode if you don't have anything to talk it about is it is it is um well no so what's sad is i was gonna watch ted lasso but my plans to like watch it fell through because there was some like just some like real life stuff that happened um but i can talk about an anime that i've been watching maybe not in the best way possible but uh okay like when i've been over like at my girlfriend's house normally i just like read um or like do something on my phone like i'll read on my phone or something uh and recently like she's been watching way of the house husband dubbed um and like she's been watching in the background and i've also been kind of watching in the background but let me tell you um maybe voice like better voice acting would save that show but i do not think so i don't know how many how much of it uh i've watched but like okay let me like i like that manga quite a bit i think that manga slaps it's funny as fuck but like one of the reasons that that manga goes so fucking hard is because like the like most of especially the early series just relies on the visual joke that is like the core of the series right it is like the Uh visual contrast between how he looks and like how stylized he is as like this fucking yakuza guy and the like juxtaposition between that and like daily house husband life right and how serious and how he'll act about these things that ultimately are you know him making his wife a lunchbox or you know him dusting the fucking corners you know what i mean (laughs) Uh uh-huh um and it's great and i love it and it's like super fun but like a large part of the reason that that like works because obviously if you're gonna like have a series that like one of the main parts of it is like the visual gag uh like the manga art carries it a lot especially early right like the manga art's fucking great and like especially in a lot of like the early things or like the things that like was done directly one-to-one by the anime it's just like not even close right so then it's like okay well then there's like voice acting and like the ability of motion is like what you could bring to it with an anime right um mm-hmm. i'm watching a dub i'm not gonna comment on the voice acting you know what i mean um, i'm sure some of it's just, okay and the rest is not i'll I'm just sure, keep my mouth know, closed about it it is what it is okay. <laughs> but like visually it is just a fucking slideshow I'm like familiar. it is See, just yeah, picture yeah. picture I was at first I was like oh my god like a Netflix produced anime right that uh isn't Uh CG and then it was just 
it's just illustration. It's like I'm playing like the arcade mode in a fighting game. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just looking at fucking pictures and then like, but but like not like playing an arcade mode in a fighting game where like the, the but without the gameplay. Like I'm watching like the cutscene compilation on YouTube, and so it's just still images with like voice behind it. It's like awful. I was like yeah, shocked. Yeah. Like I didn't realize that like. You know, people like to say, like, anime fans are eating. Anime fans are most certainly not eating. Like, I don't care how good, like, a couple anime series are a year in terms of, like, having crazy fights compared to their manga, right? And, like, how good the last couple episodes, One Piece episodes have been. Um, like, like how good 1061 and 1062 were. Like, yeah, they were fucking great. You had to deal with that dog shit way of the house husband. I've seen what your Baki looks like. You know what I mean? Like, anime fans are absolutely not fucking eating. Y'all are struggling. Y'all are, like, actually the fucking working class. Like, just, it's so sad. Um, it, it, it's just unreal, the shit y'all put up with. Like, just learn to read and just read manga and, like, I don't know, man. Like, most of the shit you're watching, if it has a manga, just do not fucking watch it. Unless it's, like, a good anime adaptation. Because you are just, man, tough. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, all I know about the... I, I, I remember some of the discourse when it came out because I was still following people who gave a shit about anime, like, production discourse and stuff, and basically all I know about it is that apparently the director read the manga and was like, wow, this manga is so good, I, I'm going to not change... or I'm going to change as little as possible with the anime to the point of not animating it. And uh, and I remember, I don't know if it was him or some other staff member who said that, like, yes, there are some scenes where it literally would just be easier to do it the normal way. Uh, but you know, they, it's, it's not like a, cause people are like, <gasps> no animation <gasps> budget, <gasps> suck it, suck more dick, please, please. Um, it's a literal stylistic choice. Is it a good stylistic choice? Well, I had zero interest in watching it and Vindy doesn't seem to be impressed. So, you know, I, yeah, I would uh, say, uh, ultimately it's a failure, especially like, because the visuals aren't even like, like, if you're going to do that, I feel like it needs to, the problem is. The visuals, if you're going to do, like, a slideshow thing, I feel like need to be hyper-stylized. You know what I mean? Like, do something, like, kind of wild with it. Like, either make, like, the stills look really fucking good or, I don't know, like, have them be done, like, I don't know, like, change the art style more. Do something creative with, like, this idea of kind of, like, a story, like, a, a picture book anime. Because that, that's basically all it is. You know what I mean? Like, it literally, like, is, like, not animated for a lot right. of it. But, like, it just looks like a generic anime. And so, like, it loses the unique visual identity that the manga has. And it doesn't have any of the pros of, like, an anime. Like, I really don't know what they were cooking. But uh, it, it did not come out. <laughs> totally it, it was tough. Um, and the worst part is she likes it. She's like, yeah, I'm enjoying this. And so I'm just sitting there keeping my mouth shut. I'm not saying a word. But uh, I know I know what they were cooking. <sighs> dog shit yeah 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 yeah. yeah. that's what they were cooking Uh, (laughs) fucking anime girls back there making that fucking but not the shirabako (laughs) anime girls the like manager in a sports series who can't cook anime girls you know what i mean yeah exactly (laughs) um okay all right um so you about done there buddy yeah yeah i that's sadly but yeah that's that's all i got about it all right, so yesterday I watched uh, Shin Kamen Rider, which got a very, like, I literally found about it like three days ago, and it's like, oh, wait, Shin Kamen Rider is getting a very limited uh, English theater release? Let's fucking go, buddy. Because, uh, you know, Shin Godzilla is literally one of my favorite movies of all time. Shin Ultraman is also incredibly fucking phenomenal. Uh, and so well, I guess the slight difference is that with Shin Kamen Rider is um, I, I have not seen the original Kamen Rider series. I've read the manga um, and I'm, and so I'm familiar with like, you know, just, and I, I'm like, they, they even kind of reference some of the stuff, like just the fact, like the fact that, so, um, in the original Kamen Rider series, like 10 episodes in the fucking actor for Kamen Rider gets injured. So they literally have to replace him, uh, with a different character who becomes Kamen Rider Nigo or number two. And so, and then later in the show, when the original actor gets better, he comes back. So there's just two Kamen Riders who look almost identical and, uh, their costumes have changed throughout the years so it's like they it, it's it's weird uh like so that that kind of that that's a thing in the movie as well um so yeah i watched it and um it's weird because it's like it was a good movie i liked it quite a bit but it just, it just feels all underwhelming to me because it's literally follow it's like the third in a trilogy of like literally two fucking phenomenal movies and it was it was solid and good but that also just like again it just feels underwhelming like oh it's just an eight out of ten fuck 
<laughs> like I feel like it's so stupid of me to get hung up up over it, but it's like because it's still really good. Like um, you know, there's a bunch of visual references to the like the original like shots that are very similar. Um, even in the trailer, you can see it. Um, and it just it it takes you know the it it seems it seems to adapt to the the ideas of the original in in really cool ways. Like um, it basically focuses on because so the premise of the original of of the movie is basically um, there's the evil there's the group Shocker who uh, they um, kidnap the main character, turn him into a cyborg in hopes of getting him to work uh, for them. Uh, but he uh, he's sort of taken out by some traitors and uh, like removed rather. And they, uh, and he decides to fight against the organization instead, basically. Um, and sort of how they frame that in the movie is they focus a lot on sort of like, uh, cause as, as I'm aware in the original series, they, they, they mentioned a lot how like the main character, he's a cyborg, he's inhuman, he's a monster, but I guess in the series, they don't like the characters don't treat him very, he still looks like a human, you know, it's more of an internal thing. That's maybe not gotten across the best way, but they very much do that differently in the movie where they're, they're very much fo- focused on like his loneliness. And, uh, there, there's a lot of like focus on how like, um, moving past like despair and grief and with shocker be- doing it in a very flawed way where the, the, their monsters, like what they do is they turn their worst memories and make it so that they instead feel ecstasy from those memories so now like oh you know this person who's important to me died i'm going to kill people and that'll make me happy and everybody else like it's fucked and you know not the way to go about things where the main character he sort of just has to like bear his pain and you know go through it um and so like they they just you know i I like the the way the conflict worked out with the different antagonists and um visually the movie's just it's you know it's hideo kano and i think um actually at the end of it because like um Shin Godzilla and Shin Ultraman were co-productions between Hideaki Anno and uh, Higuchi Shinji, but I, I, in the credits it said it was written and directed by just Hideaki Anno, so I don't know. I'd have to mm. double check, because um, that was just in the theater, so I, I don't know. It could have been missed, but or I yeah. missed it. Um, so, I, I, you know... Um, but uh, it's like it's that the direction, like the action, it's it, it's wild. There's so many like weird and creative like and like deliberate like. There's one f- part where two the two common riders are like, jumping from rooftop to rooftop, and they're it, it almost reminds me of like action figures fighting. Which if that's what it was meant to look like, like it's super it fits right, like because obviously you know uh, kids pull watching Kamen Rider would have had Kamen Rider toys and that's the kind of like Anno literally has referenced like in like Evangelion he did something uh, not quite action figures but still very like not in the like it, it's hard to describe uh, without without spoiling it but uh, they were on like a Toku fi- set during one of the mech battles it, it which was kind of cool like a film set even though it was animation um, mm-hmm. there that like there's a uh, one fight with like, where they're portraying super speed with like like sort of instantaneous flashes like the characters would kind of like teleport like snapshots almost as a way to show how fast they were moving uh like um and also it's just inc- it's incredibly violent because i think uh someone pointed out how like uh, it's like oh com- in, in the original like data stuff it's like common writer has a str- has a, a two tons in his punch and they represent it by like him turning his enemies into blood spatters like it's 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 uh if you watch the trailer or like there's um online i think there's like a, a three minute just like here's the first three minutes of the movie and then there's even uh, another like release of like the first 20 minutes in the movie so you can get an idea of like what the movie looks like but uh it's intense for sure like i i watched in the theater so like there's one he does a rider kick and he he kicks a flying enemy into the fucking ground basically and uh he pulls his foot out and there's like blood and like sticking to the foot basically and th- there was a few like uh in the audience and i was like <laughs> so it, it's a uh, memorable visually um you know it, it was you know it's just really solid i think um you know just tone wise and character wise uh like conflict wise like ah uh, yeah it's a solid fun movie there is actually going to be another showing uh, in some areas on i think june 5th or 6th which uh hold on so if you're happening to be listening to this and maybe you can either catch it tonight or tomorrow, hopefully, but uh, Sheesh, good better uh, look for tickets gamers. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was lucky that it was showing at a place near me, but that's a luxury. Not a lot of people are going to have. So, um, and other than that, you're going to have to wait. Cause uh, I remember Shin Ultraman. I watched it last year and it came out like 2021 or some shit. So, you know, uh, gonna, gonna be a hot minute before you can actually watch the full Shin Kamen Rider. So, uh, but yeah, good movie. I liked it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, where do you rank it in the Hideaki Anno Shin, you know, oh, series it, of films? It, it's my not, least favorite. Obviously, they're not a series, but, you know. 
yeah, it, it, I like Ultraman and Ult- Godzilla better. Um, but again, okay. I will point out that I, I also have not seen the original Kamen Rider series that it would have been adapting, I, uh, and right. the manga would have been the manga would have been different in a, in a few. Like I still recognize like there's one part where he's going to the final climax and he he fight he has to fight like eight common riders basically on bikes and that's it happens in the manga where they just they, there's just a mass produced common rider basically um which i just realized actually might have been referenced very like loosely in ava ava with the mass produced avas at the end uh, so i mm. don't know but um but yeah i i prefer both godzilla shin godzilla and shin ultraman so and uh evangelion three plus one for that matter so uh you know um <laughs> But uh, so yeah, like I like I kind of started with it. it. It's it's weird to say it's overwhelming, be, uh, underwhelming because it's such it it really was still a solid and fun movie. And you know, and don't let me like being less good because you might you might like someone else might like it even though they have no experience with the original Common Riders. So right, I don't know. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's still it's it's a, still a fucking phenomenal trilogy of movies, and I'd highly recommend all of them, uh, even if you have no experience. Because uh, my friend who I watched uh. I, I I rewatched and uh, had him watch Shin Godzilla for the first time, and then we watched Shin Ultraman for the first time together, and he really liked both of them. So, uh, he, and he's never I don't think he's seen Godzilla or Ultraman ever. So, um, but uh, but I guess one big difference is that those two have more focus on like the um, the sci-fi in Ultraman's case and the politics in both. Where Common Rider is very much more focused on like the character drama um, in a way that might work more or less depending on who you are basically mm-hmm. um so like yeah it actually you know what now that i think that think about that like the characters in this are definitely way more focused on and more fleshed out and interesting than any of the characters in shin ultraman or shin uh, godzilla but um you know they're different movies with different strengths and it, i think how the counter characters were handled works for all of them respectively you know um mm-hmm. so it is what it is cool uh, uh, so yeah, I, I assume wrap up because I highly, you know, I, you don't seem I, to have yeah. a second. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I mean, if you have something you want to do, you can do a second. Mm, but uh, let me think. Because uh, we have time in the episode, so yeah. Oh, um, I have something, and maybe you can talk about it a little bit too. Uh, so this was another one I caught up. I, I did last year. Uh, I caught up to Hajime no fucking Ippo, uh, and it's oh, literally in my top. Well, I am 10 not manga. currently current on Ippo. I'm. I know. I'm not going to mention recent. Well, I, I did mention one recent thing to you that made me think about catching up. Where we're getting into yeah. a fucking uh, Mashaba fight, uh, which yeah. is as good a reason to catch up as any. Well, <laughs> I was. I. I had uh, my my brother DM me to tell me that uh, Mashaba was was doing his job and uh, had <laughs> recently cucked Ippo and cock blocked him, and that that's all I needed to hear to just remember that he's the goat. You know what I mean? Well, um, I mean, that is what happened, but all, there is also more going on because Mashba's, like, grown up a bit, uh, for sure. But, uh, whew, um, yeah, yeah, it's it was also very fucking funny because <laughs> Ippo's, Ippo is such a fucking good manga. Like, you know, it is a lot of times, like, really fucking funny. Um, but, like, you know, the art's insane. Uh, there's so many good fights. Like, holy fuck. It, it like, <sighs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I read it. Um in a pretty decent amount of time and it just was you know like because I, I already had a foot in the door i knew i liked it because i'd seen the anime and the anime was pretty fucking solid um you know but just getting the manga in, i mean there were some scans that were iffy but it's not the worst scans i've suffered through um like there was like one chapter that was like really bad but it was literally like one chapter and it's like what unfortunate um but it's like it's amazing how fucking ambitious the story is too because you were the one who told me it's like what was it chapter 1200 where yeah it was Morikawa's like halfway like, through the story yep we're halfway done and it's like i now Whoa. now that we're here it's like i kind of see it this guy's kind of insane <laughs> jesus christ like i don't know what um, i don't know what he's on but i mean it's i mean it's good you know for sure for sure um no yeah like i am super excited for more because like the what we have and what it's got like yeah, the story just has very like if you're if if you're someone who's worried about it being long, like I understand the time investment, but like as a story, like like I said, it's literally one of my, it's it's I think hold on, damn okay, it's my second favorite sports manga because Ch- Chihiro is just like made for me specifically, um right uh which is but it's 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 fucking phenomenal like um Ipo's good like Takamura fucking his fights are insane uh especially the the one um like the cast is super good like aoki and fucking um brain uh kimura they're like they're getting good shit um 
Like, the whole cat, like, a- every character gets a fight, basically. Like, in the way they'll bring back older characters in different ways sometimes. Like, like we were talking about it, where Mashiva is, like, I, I think, like, especially by the end of the series, is gonna be my favorite. But, like, I might almost say Mashiva right now, because, like... Yeah, like, especially Ippo if he gets, a- like, one yeah. more good fight. He's just kind of the goat right now, like... Yeah, because, like, Ippo has so many good fights, but Mashiva, like, percentage-wise, like, all all of his fights, except for, like, one, which was kind of a short squash fight in general. Uh, but, like, every... Like, but almost every fight is he does is a fucking banger. Like, Mashiva's... I... He's so funny. Like, I love I love his kind of, like, rivalry slash, like, friendship with Sendo that's kind of coming out, where, like, he's... Like, they hate each other, but also they kind of connect and they're kind of similar, which is great. Um... And that, like, Sendo is so. I loved what he was just fucking doing his journey around Japan, and he'd like, here's my notes from all the, all I'm learning, and these are these are just cat drawings. He's like, yeah, but go to the next page. And it's like, why? He's so fun. Sendo's so good. Um, fucking Volg. Uh, oh my god! And the, the fight that just ended with fucking Ricardo and um Wally. Uh, mm-hmm. fucking. Oh yeah, they did. The That's thing where I was. I was, I was in expecting. the Ricardo Wally fight, <laughs> and it was so good. Fuck. Um and. Uh, yeah, I think, like, the the best way I can phrase, like, what it does with all the characters is, like, it, it genuinely makes, like, the, the boxing world feel very alive because there are so many characters and you see them all the time and, you know, like, they'll show up in, like, very, like, organic ways as well as, you know what I mean? Like, um, uh-huh. sometimes, you know, they show up just for a fight, but, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, this guy was also going to be a doctor and now he's shown up as a doctor, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, right, so which was a really cool way to yeah bring him back, and then um then like uh the fucking Sawamura where it's like uh okay here's this guy he fights Zipo it was a great fucking fight and then they bring him back to have him fight fucking Mashiba and it's like oh my fuck and then the way that went with him and it's like holy fuck dude and he's even come back uh, ah, god damn and then um like yeah the the char- like yeah it just handles handles the characters really well. And, um, Miata is super cool as well. Like, he, he gets very little comparatively, I feel like, for his importance, but it, it, like, works perfectly and makes a lot of sense. Um, it also took me way too long to realize that he's, like, Lightning God and, uh, Ippo's the Wind God, so they're doing, like, a Fujin Raijin thing. Like, they did, uh, you know, Naruto and Sasuke are also, uh, Fujin and Raijin, and what I, I remember, realized that, I was like, fuck, why did it take me so long to notice that? Um, so, you know, the rivalry is really cool, and, uh... Yeah, phenomenal fucking manga. Um, yeah. All right. Is that going to be it for this episode of the Weeb Club? That's going to be it, except for the wrap up. If yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Because uh, um, I guess I have now have two things that you're probably. I mean, yeah. So, so week. I'll probably talk about Ted Lasso or Street Fighter. Probably Street Fighter, but maybe Ted Lasso if I feel like I want to sit on Street Fighter, or we could do two rotations because I'd have two things to talk about for once. You never know. We'll keep it fresh. <laughs> what about you? Um, yeah, so aside from the things that I still have uh, to talk about, the, um, what I could talk about next week um, is I'll have caught up to a Card Captor Soccer a Clear Card arc, which is the last clamp manga I have to read. I've, so I, 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 the only things that I haven't read that have clamps involvement are um, uh, Blood Sea and Sweet Valerian, which are both like, well, because I started reading Blood Sea and it's not actually drawn by clamp. Uh, and also I'm familiar with that one for the anime. Um, where Sleep Valerian, I started reading it, and they mentioned the anime right off the bat. So, so these are cases. So I, basically, I don't know what the deal with them is, and they seem to be like as involved with the anime as like, like I don't know. It's not just a manga that was adapted to anime, basically. So I wanted to, you know, I'll check those out at a different time. But uh, so I'll probably I might talk about like just all the clamp manga, like blitz through and just sort of like uh, try and give like short thoughts on all you know all of them because I I'll have finished you know, a read of every, basically everything in English from, you know, one of the most important groups of manga authors, you know, uh, Clamp's fucking a big deal. So, uh, just a semi, just to give my thoughts and also maybe as like a sort of like, uh, you know, should you read this one or not? Um, cause, uh, I, I had a, the idea ages ago to do like a Clamp reading guide with the sort of intent. Cause I, cause I mentioned before that Subasa Resort Chronicle is sort of a big crossover thing and Mm -hmm. just the way but even then like the way the universe works is like you know there's other series like i'll just literally be reading like oh here's a random fork volume clamp manga and just fucking characters who i know from another series will just show up and i'm like oh you're just from that like one short romance manga they did like five years ago and now you're here cool 
um, you know, in non real, you know, major ways, usually, uh, sometimes they'll be more important, um, you know, um, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just talk about clamp stuff generally, maybe, um, next week. So, uh, yeah. All right. Adios. Yep. Uh, goodbye. Thank you for listening.